Welcome back. So let's just try and do um, a, a quick and dirty overview right here about what we actually encode have on right now compared to the image I just showed you right here. So if we go into the REST API, so think of it this way. Postman sends a request again and this time he sends some data to create a new customer. Now the REST API starts right here for us, the customer REST API. He has a controller, he has the customer controller and that's where the data is going to be received from the postman. Now we're going to get some JSON from Postman and what we're going to do is we're going to take that JSON, so think of it this way, we're getting some JSON right here. We're going to convert that using this uh, beautiful way of Microsoft's way of kind of handling JSON and converting it behind the scenes for us. We convert it from JSON into a customer object, a C Sharp object. So now we have a C Sharp object and we can then send that C Sharp object down to the service. Now the service is an interface, but let's just go down there anyway to kind of show you. This is what the service can do right now. So these are the functions we have available from the outside when we're talking about the service. And what we want to do is we want to create a customer. So how do we do that? Well, we also have an implementation of the service. And in that guy, if I go down to create customer, all I'm doing for now is just calling the repositories create customer. So this is the job for the repository. Now the repository is still just an interface. It's actually right here, still in the core of the application. So it just explains that right now we can create a customer. We'll dive into this and change this a lot in the coming videos because there's a lot of ways to make this even better. But this is kind of how we do it now. So we say somebody in the world has to create a customer. Now what do we do? We jump into infrastructure and there we actually have the actual implementation of how to create a customer. Pretty much mean that we have a customer repository class that implements this interface right here. Let's jump into that. If we scroll down you'll see there's a create customer right here. Now this create function right here, it only knows about the fake database right now, but it uses the fake database to first create an ID for the customer and then add the customer to the fake database and in the end it returns the customer. What is the fake database? Well for now it's just lists, right? It's just lists and we've seen some problems with lists, we've seen, seen how easy it is to set it up but it starts getting a real messy as you start working with it and it will get even messier if you keep working with it like this. So we need to stop that. We need to stop using a list. So what are we going to do? Well we're actually going to remove this guy and add a new one. We're going to add a new infrastructure that we're going to call customer app infrastructure data, nothing else. So let's just do that before we actually end this video so you guys know where we're heading. So I'll go in on infrastructure still, I'll say add, I'll say new project, I'll say I want to make a class library a .NET Core, .NET Core, very important, .NET Core class library. I'll say customer app because that's the name of my application. I'll say infrastructure because that's where it's, re it's residing right now. And I'll call it data because this is going to be my data access inside the infrastructure. We can make logging in infrastructure as well. We can make a lot of things and this is the data access. That's why I call it data. That's it. I picked .NET Core app 2.1. You can pick 2.0 if that's your version you're using right now. And there we go. Now we have this new infrastructure data available and that's the guide that we're going to start building and using to kind of create our ent entity framework database within the next couple of videos. So that's it for this lesson. I want to do one more thing. I want to get rid of the class right here. Let's just do some refactoring before we end it actually. I want to kind of remove this class, delete it. There we go. And I also want to go down here. The console app is starting to annoy me so I'll just delete it. This is a new repository so you still have if you want to check out the old videos, they're still there, they're different repos. So it's gone here now, but is it actually gone? Well, on Visual Studio, I'm not sure, but I think you're normally asked, do you want to also delete the folder, the project? But if you're not, then you have to know that even though you remove projects from in here, it doesn't mean they're removed from your finder, from your file explorer. If you jump into the project just by right-clicking right here and saying uh, reveal in finder or show in explorer, you'll see that maybe this guy still exists and look, right here it still exists. So I'm going to right click and move that to trash and now I can remove, remove it completely. Now this is kind of important because we don't want to share this on GitHub if we don't want to use it anymore. So get it out of the way if you're not using it anymore. Completely remove it, right? So that's it for this lesson. Now we have a new project that we can start diving into. It's not, there's not going to be a lot of work here. We're going to pretty much rebuild everything we did down here except it's going to be using uh, some kind of SQL database behind the scenes in the end. So that's it for this lesson, see you next time.